Okay, eighth grade. Today, um, we're in our back in our reading packet, um, and today is Thursday, May fourteenth, I believe. Um, so we're starting on page twenty-eight of the reading packet. This is another one of those assessments. So we're gonna go ahead and um, you guys are gonna do twenty-eight, page twenty-eight through thirty-two. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, walk you through the questions. That way you can better answer them on your own. Um, but it is an assessment, so you'll need to answer it on your own, um, like I said. But I can walk you through these questions. So again, we're in the reading packet today, starting on page 28. And I am going to... I'm going to read through this story with you and then walk you through the questions. So this story is called From a Pair of Silk Stockings. Little Mrs. Somers one day found herself the unexpected possessor of $15. It seemed to her a very large amount of money and the way in which it was stuffed and bulged her worn old portemonnaie gave her a feeling of importance such as she had not enjoyed for years. The question of investment was one that occupied her greatly. For a day or two, she walked about, apparently in a dreamy state, but really absorbed in speculation and calculation. She did not wish to act hastily, to do anything she might regret afterward regret, but it was still during the still hours of the night, when she lay awake, revolving plans in her mind, that she seemed to see her way clearly toward a proper and judicious use of her money. A dollar or two should be added to the price usually paid for Janie's shoes, which would ensure their lasting and appreciable time longer than they usually did. She would buy so and so many yards of percale for new shirtwaists for the boys and Janie and Mag. She intended to make, make the old ones do by skillful patching. Mag should have another gown. She had some beautiful patterns, veritable bargains in the shop windows, and still there would be enough left over for new stockings, two pairs apiece, and what darning that would save for a while. She would get caps for the boys and sailor hats for the girls, the vision of her little bro broad looking fresh and dainty and new for once in their lives excited her and made her restless and wakeful with anticipation. The neighbors sometimes talked of certain better days that little Mrs. Somers had known before she had ever thought of being Mrs. Somers. She herself indulged in no such morbid retrospection. She had no time, no second of time to devote to the past. The needs of the present absorbed her every faculty. A vision of the future, like some dim, gaunt monster, sometimes appalled her. her but luckily, tomorrow never comes. Mrs. Somers was one who knew the value of bargains, who could stand for hours making her way inch by inch toward the desired object that was selling below cost. She could elbow her way if need be. She had learned to clutch a, good, a piece of goods and hold it and stick to it with persistence and determination till her turn came to be served, no matter when it came. But that day she was a little faint and tired. She had swallowed a light luncheon. No. When she came to think of it, between getting the children fed and the place righted and preparing herself for shopping, she had actually forgotten to eat any luncheon at all. She sat herself upon a revolving stool before a counter that was comparatively deserted, trying to gather strength and courage to charge through an eager multitude that was besieging breastworks of shirts, shirting, and figured lawn. An all-gone limp feeling had come over her, and she rested her head aimlessly upon the counter. She wore no gloves. By degrees, she grew aware that her hand had encountered something very soothing, very pleasant to touch. She looked down, and she saw that her hand lay upon a pile of silk stockings. A place guard nearby announced that they had been reduced in price from $2.50 to $1.98, and a young girl who stood behind the counter asked her if she wished to examine their line of silk hosiery. She smiled, just as if she had been asked to inspect a tiara of diamonds with the ultimate views of purchasing it. But she went on feeling the soft, sheeny, luxurious things with both hands, now holding them up to see them glisten, and to feel them glide serpent-like through her fingers. 
Two hectic blotches came suddenly to her pale cheeks. She looked up at the girl. Do you think there is any eight and a halfs among these? There were a number of eight and a halfs, in fact. They, there were more of that size than any other. Here was a light blue pair. There was some lavender, some all black, and various shades of tan and gray. Mrs. Somers selected a black pair and looked at them very long and closely. She pre pretended to be examining their texture, which the clerk assured her was excellent. A dollar and ninety-eight cents, she mused aloud. Well, I'll take this pair. She handed a girl a five-dollar bill and waited for her change and for her parcel. What a very small parcel it was. It seemed lost in the depths of her shabby shopping bag. Mrs. Somers, after that, did not move in the direction of the bargain counter. She took the elevator, which carried her to the upper floor into the region of the ladies' waiting rooms. Here, in a retired corner, she exchanged her cotton socks for the stockings for the new silk ones she had just bought. She was not going through any acute mental process of reasoning with herself, nor was she striving to explain to her satisfaction the motive of her action. She was not thinking at all. She seemed for some time to be taking a rest from that laborious and fatiguing function and to have abandoned herself to some mechanical impulse that directed her actions and freed her of responsibility. Okay, so let's walk through these questions. So for this one we have in the last paragraph, what does the reader understand about Mrs. Somers that she probably doesn't understand herself? Well, let's go ahead and eliminate some of the answers because as we know... A lot of the times there's an answer that just doesn't make sense um, that we can eliminate to help us to be able to come to that conclusion a little bit easier. So the first one says she has just taken the silk stockings without paying. Well, that we can already immediately eliminate that because we saw her give the lady $5, right? So we know that that's not the right answer. She has forgotten how to behave properly in pu public. Is she acting, is she doing anything inappropriate? No, right? So that leaves us with the last two. So between the last two, you need to figure out which one is correct. So it says she's not able to think clearly because she is so upset or she longs for the life she had before she had children. So you need to go back and read this last paragraph in order to be able to answer that question. And you need to think about whether she's not able to think clearly. Is she upset at all? Or is she thinking about the life she had before she had children? Which one of those is the correct answer? Once you answer that, you're going to choose which sentence from the passage best supports the answer to part A. So whatever you decide between these two answers, whichever one you decide is right, you need to choose which sentence best supports it. So Miss Somers, after that, did not move in the direction of the bargain counter. She took the elevator, which carried her to an upper floor into the region of ladies' waiting rooms. Here, in a retired corner, she exchanged her cotton stockings for the new silk ones, which she had just bought. Or, she seemed to be taking, taking a rest from that laborious and fatiguing function and to have abandoned herself to some mechanical impulse that directed her actions and freed her of responsibility. So, which of these supports whatever answer you decided for this one? That's what you need to figure out for part B. Seven says, what does Mrs. Somers' plan for using the money help the reader understand about what kind of person she is? Select all that apply. So, I can tell you right now that for seven, there is two answers for this one. So, you need to remember that. There's two answers. Oh, that's not a two. Two answers. Okay, there's not more than two, not less than two. There's two answers for seven. So what does Mrs. Somers' plan for using the money help the reader understand about what kind of person she is? Select all that apply. Her plan shows that she enjoys spending money on herself. Her plan shows that she is used to putting others before herself. So we know right now that the answer can't be both A and B right? Because these are two opposite things. So right now, decide whether A is true or whether B is true. Before I even read the rest, decide whether A or B is true, because it can't be both. And then eliminate whichever one you don't think it is. C says, her plan shows that she often does things without thinking. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys right now that C is not correct, right? Because she spends that whole night before she goes out shopping thinking and planning about what she's going to spend her money on. 
right? So we know that C is not our answer. Her plan shows that she does not really care about her family, or her plan shows that she behaves practically and sensibly, which what that means is, is that she spends her money in a good way. She doesn't like just go and blow all of her money. That's what E is saying. So you need to, again, two answers. So one of them is A, one of them is B, one of them is D, and one of them is E. So it's either A or B, and then either D or E. Moving on to page 31, it says, What effect does the author create by comparing the silk stockings to a tiara of diamonds? So the silk stocking is just like socks or like leggings, pantyhose, that sort of thing. So what what is the author trying to do by comparing those to a tiara of diamonds? Are they trying to express that the stockings are a luxury item, which luxury would mean that it's like a high-end, like, really nice thing to have during this time period. Um, they imply that the stockings are shiny. Um, they illustrate that the stockings are delicate or like fragile. Or D suggests the stockings are covered in jewels. Well, I think immediately we can just go ahead and take out D because they're not covered in jewels, right? It doesn't say anything about them being covered in jewels. They're just using this as a metaphor to compare the tiara of diamonds to the silk stockings. So 9 says, many religious works include a character who gives in to temptation. What temptation is, is like you're tempted to do something or like you want to do something that maybe you shouldn't be doing for whatever reason, right? So it says, for example, the Bible includes the story of Adam and Eve in which Eve is tempted to eat a piece of forbidden fruit by a serpent. How does the character of Mrs. Som Somers update this common literary character type. So how does Mrs. Somers compare to Eve is what it's asking you. So it says because it is set in a city instead of a garden, Mrs. Somers is tempted to spend extra money on her daughter's shoes instead of being tempted to buy, instead of being tempted to take a bite of the forbidden fruit. Well, I think immediately we can take this out because she's not really being tempted to spend extra money on her daughter's shoes. She's obviously being tempted by what? The stockings, right? So we know that her temptation has nothing to do with, with stuff she bought for her children, but rather something that she wants, right? So because the character of Mrs. Somers is a mother, she's tempted to buy too many items for her children instead of being tempted to take a bite from the forbidden fruit. C says basically the opposite of it, which is because of a more modern setting, Mrs. Somers is tempted to spend money on what she wants instead of being tempted to take a bite from the forbidden fruit. Or because of the character Mrs. Somers is poor, she's tempted to steal a pair of stockings from a store instead of being tempted to buy, tempted to take a bite from the forbidden fruit. Well, she doesn't say anything or even give a thought about stealing them, right? So we can immediately eliminate D. So is it it's either B, which is that she's too tempted to buy stuff for her children, or is it C, where she's tempted to buy stuff for herself? So you need to figure out which one of those is true by the end of the story. What temptation did she give into? Was it buying stuff for her children or buying stuff for herself? So 10 says, which of the following best summarizes this passage? Now, we need to remember with summaries that we can't have... There's several things that we can't have. We don't need details that are important to the story as a whole, right? So in example where it says something about the color shirt she's wearing, that's not relevant to, or like if it's talking about the color of the stockings, that's not relevant to the summary of the story because we're just looking for the most important details. And then it can't have opinions in it, right? So it can't say anything about what type of person Mrs. Somers is or whether something she did was dumb or smart because that would be opinion-based. So we need to have something that's not opinion-based. So A says, after Mrs. Somers comes into possession of $15, she decides to use the money on clothes for her children. However, she ends up spending some of it on a pair of silk stockings for herself. That's one option. B, 
Mrs. Somers goes to the store to buy a new pair of stockings. While there, she also purchases a variety of shoes, clothes, gown patterns, caps, and sailor hats for her children. Mrs. Somers has an admirable plan. I think immediately, let's go ahead and eliminate C, because can anyone think really quickly about why we would eliminate C? Just reading that first part. Because it says that her plan is admirable, right? Which is an opinion. We can't say that her plan is smart or admirable because that would be opinion and summaries don't include opinions on the story. Then D says, when Mrs. Somers comes into an unexpected sum of money, she sees an opportunity for providing her children with new clothing. She plans to use her knowledge of bargains as she shops. So between A, B, and D, you need to decide which one tells the best summary from the beginning to the end of the story. Not just a part of the story, they need to be giving us a rundown of the whole story, and the most important parts only. Moving on to 32, what you're going to do here is you're going to just fill out this chart. Um, you need to, all you're doing here is citing evidence. So if we're using the race strategy, we have restate, answer, cite, and explain. So what you're doing here is that citing part. So you read the statements below. One describes a theme of the passage and the other describes how this theme is developed through the passage's setting. Find a sentence from the story that supports each statement, then write it in the box beside the statement it supports. So the theme is that it can be difficult to live in the service of others. Then you need to go back into the story and find a quote that shows that it can be difficult to live in the service of others. You need to find a quote that supports this. Then this one says the setting of the store provides Mrs. Somers with the option of doing something for herself. So then you need to show a quote of when the store gave Mrs. Somers an opportunity to do something for herself. So you need to have just all you have to do for this one. You don't have to explain anything, nothing like that. You just have to go into the story and put in quotation marks, which is just like this. So you would type the sentence in there and then end it with quotation marks. So you would put it in quotes, whatever from the story. So like if you went back into the story, let's say... Do you think there's any eight and a halfs among these? Let's say that's the answer you choose. You would write that in that box in that chart. So you're just going back into the story and pulling out a quote that supports this theme and how the setting develops the theme. And you're putting it in quotes, like I said. So if you guys have any questions, you can get a hold of me during office hours. And um, I'll also have those extra office hours tomorrow from 7 to 8. And again... Um, or sorry, from 7 to 7.30, and those extra office hours are just for if you have questions. So if you have any questions, I will be on Zoom during that time period.